Hi everybody, they say that those who love you the most hurt you the most, or at the very least they tend to be the most critical of you, and that's why I know my dad loves me. Anyway, since I am a pretty massive NPC fanboy, I'm also at times one of its biggest critics, and today I want to talk to you about Flexbeat, a paid plugin effects that came out last week for the NPC. Now Flexbeat itself is not entirely new, it was already available in controller mode when you hook up the NPC to a computer, but now it's made its way into standalone, and as a strictly standalone user, I was thrilled because the flex beat basically turns your MPC into a turntable or SB404 style effects box, or at least so I thought. In this video, I want to show you a bit of what all the flex beat fuss is all about, what it sounds like, and what I like about it, and also about three or four things I think could be added or improved for it to become truly an essential must-buy MPC plugin. For complete transparency's sake, please know that even though I did buy the MPC XSC myself, the flex beat was sent over to me by Akai for review, but they have no say whatsoever over the contents of this video or any of my opinions here. So first off, what is Flexbeat? Flexbeat is a way to add a huge amount of turntable, vinyl scratching, stutter, and gate effects into your beats and play it live. It's a fun and fast way to breathe some variation into your tracks on the fly, and if you're around my age, you probably fantasized about scratching vinyl records most of your childhood. Well, it's here, and the sheer quality and just range of this effect is pretty damn amazing. So let's jump in and see what it can do. So I've loaded up this Jura ARP in here, and just the ARP track is gonna be running through the Flexbeat player. The way that the Flexbeat player is arranged is that you have 16 slots of effects. These are all customizable, and you just touch them. And you get a variety of effects. And by variety, I mean like a lot. I'm just gonna scroll here over the options. Yeah, that is a lot. Now, of course, this is all extremely customizable, and once you've picked out which patterns you'll be using, you can pick out what the pattern behavior is gonna be. You have three pattern behaviors, loop, one shot, and hold. So if we go back into the performance mode, if I select a hold pattern, then it'll just be active while my finger is pressing down. And once I let go, it'll go back to pad one. Remember that, because that's important. If I have a loop pattern, then once I press it, it'll just keep looping over and over until I select another one. And finally, the one shot, which is, as the name implies, it'll just go once and then go back to pad number one. Other things that you can also customize on the Flexbeat is the dry-wet mix and also quantize or not quantize, and that affects the triggering behavior. Basically, if you have the quantize on, then it'll wait till the next bar until it activates the effect. See, that's on cue and then it'll go back. Instead, if I have quantize off, then it'll just immediately just change into whatever pattern I select. Now, for one thing, I really love that there's just a ton of presets to choose from, from tape stops, deck on and off, stutters, beat repeats, and scratches. This is the stuff that I really love to do on my SP404, but where the flex beat goes a step further and becomes a very powerful production tool as well is that it also allows for complex patterns that have really well thought out mixes of all of these effects. Of course, certain patterns or effects will go better with certain types of samples. So for example, if I go into this sample over here, which is just a continuous held string patch, and I go into the flex beat, and I add one of the gate patterns, you get that beautiful effect right there. So with just a sustained string, I get like a whole song. Now let's try that with something like a guitar with a bit of pluckiness in it. Obviously, I have some practicing to do here. Something that really stands out to me on the flex beat are the patterns which are combinations or mixes of effects. Like for example, this gated 
with a little bit of stutter effect. So interesting. I think it's fairly obvious, and especially after playing around with this for a few days, this is really a lot of fun. And you can lose hours just playing around, mixing, matching, finding stuff that works. Happy accidents everywhere. But I can't help but feel that it could be so much better with just a few tiny tweaks. So here goes my list of caveats or wish lists, stuff that I really hope that Akai could manage to add in and hopefully make Flexbeat everything that I know this thing could really be. So number one on my wish list is definitely being able to trigger the patterns on the physical pads. Now, this is pretty self-explanatory. You can only activate the patterns while using the touch screen and you can't assign or control buttons, which is cumbersome for lots of reasons. I really don't like banging on my touch screen, you know? Part of the performance is the physical feeling that you get while doing stuff like this, banging on the pads. Besides the feel itself, I think it's way easier to maybe miss your mark and, you know, maybe activate that effect outside of the pocket, outside of the groove, and that can sometimes mess or hinder your performance. I would imagine that this is just a firmware update away and shouldn't be too hard to implement, and it's definitely way up there on my wish list. Now, the second thing that I would love this thing to be able to do is to enable a retrigger mode. The way that the flex beat works right now, the effects are constantly running on a loop. Imagine an independent LFO, if you will. This loop seems to be tied to the global tempo of the song, but there's no way to disable or activate the effects from zero. So whenever you touch or activate that pattern, it'll apply the effect, but at the moment of the phase, at where it's at. It's no retriggering appliable. So let me show you what I mean. This independent LFO is one bar long. So if I activate this, for example, to do a backspin effect, if I activate it at the beginning of the cycle, I'll get the effect. But let's say I want to do this at that very last end of the bar, I almost get no effect. No effect. And that's because I'm getting this part of the curve. You see? What I would love to be able to do is when I touch this, get a new start of the cycle. I feel this is a fairly basic option to have and a very logical one, especially for an effect like the deck on or deck off, when I can't activate the effect in the precise moment I'm aiming for, kind of makes it kind of pointless. Caveat number three, allowing for the effects to turn off after firing a one shot or hold without having to sacrifice an entire pattern slot. Right now, the default behavior on the flex beat is that after I trigger a one shot or hold pattern, it'll automatically return back to pad number one. Let me show you. So I'm on pad number one, which is empty. And if I trigger a one shot, it'll go back to pad number one. Now this won't be a problem if you have pattern number one slot on empty, but if you had something in there, let's say you had all your slots used up, then after you do the one shot, it'll go back to number one and still have an effect going on. Let me demonstrate. So I'm on number one. It always go back to number one, but you can't do a grab effect where after I let go of that one shot, it just goes back to being absolutely dry. If I have pad number one empty, then it's no problem. However, for me to use this as a set of one shots, I have to sacrifice pattern number one and keep it empty. The way I would love to use this is to have the option so that after a one shot or if I let go of a hold pattern, the status goes back to inactive without needing to empty out a slot on pattern one. By the way, it doesn't matter what pattern behavior pattern one has. For example, over here, I have it on hold. So I was hoping that once I triggered the one shot, since it was on hold, it wouldn't trigger, but go back to looping. It does sound cool though. So now we get to number four of my suggested firmware updates for the Flexbeat, which would be recording MIDI pattern into automation. Right now, there's no way to record into MIDI any of the improvisations that you're doing. So for example, if I'm over here in Flexbeat and I put overdub and I start messing around with this, 
none of that behavior is going to be recorded. You can, however, go into the track menu and you can add this as an automation and you can draw it in. So over here, I'm going to go into flex beat and you can control the dry wet mix, the pattern that's going to be using or the quantize. So if I draw in something like this or like this, then it can make for some very cool and interesting behaviors where it's going to kind of randomize and jump around. But since some of the most fun on the flex beat is had while live improvising, it would be really useful to be able to record that into MIDI. Now you can always record your performance directly into audio, but having it in MIDI could allow you to turn a good performance with maybe a few hookups into a great one in post-production. And that brings me to the last thing on my wish list, and it's probably the biggest one. I mean, I don't even know if the hardware can even handle it, but if we're asking Santa for gifts this Christmas, this would be a great one. And that would be if Akai could enable using Flexbeat to process external audio live. As it stands, Flexbeat can only mangle audio clips or samples that are already saved on the project. So if you want to live mangle an incoming synth, you're still better off with something like an Octatrack or an SB404. Since I've been using this as a glorified effects pedal with the Air Delay Pro or Air Flavor Pro on my Telecaster, I'm thinking it might not be impossible. So here's hoping. And that's pretty much it. That's my wish list. And even though I do feel that it does have some room to improve and grow, I still think that Flexbeat is a great addition to the plugin library. It brings in a staggering amount of options for you to play with, and it definitely adds great potential both in live performing and in song production. Also, I just couldn't be happier that I finally have this thing on standalone. If you're at all interested in finding out about other great MPC plugins, how about you check out my Jura video right over here. I want to thank Akai for sending me Flexbeat to try out, and I want to thank all of you for watching. I hope you found this video useful, or at least entertaining. Hope you have a great week. See you next time.